This is our son, Savion Saint Prix, and he's four years old. An elephant and tiger. <laughs> he was in the NICU for a hundred days. He was born twenty-seven weeks, five days. Twenty-seven five, yeah. Um Born at two and a half pounds and very small. Where does his face go? I don't know. You don't know? <laughs> it goes right there. Because he was born prematurely, you would expect him to have a delay, but he really doesn't. He's bigger than kids his age. Um, it's actually surprising to see people's response when we tell him how early he was and how little he was when he was born. Well, Sabian was doing very well for, you know, from about week two to week four, where he was uh, starting to grow, taking all of his feedings, and had gotten off his intravenous fluids. And then during the early hours of one morning, started having a little bit more trouble with his breathing, and then had a big setback where he had thrown up and gotten milk down into his lungs and had a you know, pretty rapid downward spiral. But I used to always grab his finger, and he'd give me a little squeeze, you know? And uh, just throughout the process, I was like, okay, as long as I get my squeeze, I know he's okay. And that morning, I, was, I kept trying to grab his hand. And at one point, when all the nurses and doctors started to come in, I was trying to get my squeeze, and there was just nothing. And in that short period of time, he was not doing well, but he very, very quickly turned critical. Things went into pandemonium, like you see in the scene of an ER show. And um, he basically stopped breathing. I was called over to the bedside to evaluate him, and it was clear that he needed to have a tube put back on to help him breathe, put on a ventilator again. They kind of, you know, ushered us out, and Dr. Slagle went into action, and, and we were just outside waiting and, you know, just, just waiting, not knowing what would happen. Uh, Horrible time. Yeah, it was pretty, pretty traumatic. As soon as they got Savvy unstable, the first thing Dr. Slagle did is made the, them come out and get us. And um, the nurses didn't want to come get us right away because they wanted an opportunity to clean up. And Dr. Schlegel said, absolutely not. You go get his parents and you get them back in here now because he needs to hear their voices and he needs to feel their hands. There's no question at all that she saved his life. No. We have really extraordinary outcomes in our nursery, and I think part of that is we have moms that are coming to us who take great care of themselves. And I also have an absolutely amazing team, of doctors and nurses and respiratory therapists and nutritionists and everybody that's really pulling in the same direction, you know, taking, putting the care of the babies and their families at the center. You can make progress again. Nobody chooses the newborn ICU as part of their birth plan. So we have to form a relationship with the parents. Um, and it's hard, you know, when you go through life and death circumstances with these families, it's hard not to become a little attached to everyone. We would come in at times and find nurses holding him because they get attached to your kids. And they knew he was gonna be going home soon and they wanted to get their time with him coming out of a situation like this, you, you're, you are very acutely aware of the fragility of life, shall I say, um, that in a moment, things can change. You appreciate life a whole lot more having gone through this experience, and you appreciate being able to have a child having gone through this experience. Dr. Slagle, you're an amazing person. I feel incredibly fortunate to have had you be a part of our life in such a profound way, and thank you. Thank you. And he thanks you too. <laughs>